Hello and welcome to our video devotional for today, Monday, December the 17th, 2018. We're just a, a one day short of a whole week out from the celebration of Christmas, a great Christian tradition that obviously has lots of things that have been glamorized over the years. And, and so today I, I just really want to concentrate on the fact that the first Christmas isn't glamorous, not at all. In Luke 2, 1 through 7, it says it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. When we say the first Christmas isn't glamorous, we mean that all the glitz, all the gift giving, all the commercialization that surrounds the Christian Christmas in America is a far cry from the reality of the first Christmas. Mary and Joseph didn't arrive in Bethlehem in a limo. There was no CNN, CBS, ABC, NBC, ESPN, Hallmark, or Life Channels present to video Mary's delivery. There was no delivery suite at the best private hospital and no celebrity doctors were called in to assist in the delivery. No, after some long travel on dusty roads, probably on a donkey, they arrived too late in Bethlehem to secure a room. Now, tradition states the inn was a hotel. But we have no evidence to, to prove that when it says there was no room in the inn, that the inn was a hotel. In fact, it was more than likely a guest room in someone's home. The guest room was full, or if you prefer, the inn was full. So Joseph and Mary were sent to the lower level. <laughs> Probably not out in some stable somewhere in the field. They were sent to the lower level. And so the best I can explain it is, is that it was, it was kind of like a walkout basement, except there weren't any walls on one side. It was just open to the fields. And it was under the house, this lower level, where the animals came in to be fed and watered, particularly in severe weather. They were tended to there. So <clears throat> everything associated with the, the sheep, the cattle, and the donkeys was in that setting. And you kind of catch my drift, don't you? odors and smells associated with the keeping of animals. Literally a, a very messy scene. And since there was no room in the end, they went down to the lower level. Now the closest I can come to this is being up in the northeast part of the United States where the barns are connected to the house by a long walkway. And while I was out there with my wife some years ago, we inquired as to why all these connections to the barns. And it was because when the snow gets so deep, they couldn't get from the house to the barn, they could walk in an enclosed uh, corridor to get out there. So down below the home, in the lower level of the home, and this probably seems more likely to fit what would have happened in, in that day and age, Jesus was born. I wasn't born in a manger. And so we, we often hear this, and maybe we even sing about it. He wasn't born in a manger. He's more than likely born on a makeshift table. And after his birth, he was placed in a manger, which was a place for holding hay to feed the sheep, the cattle, and the donkeys. This was no high-profile birth in swanky surroundings. God's Son made his appearance on earth in the lowest of circumstances. A humble birth conveying the most amazing message to all of creation, the transcendent God condescended to become with us. Emmanuel, 
God with us. The statement is, God is approachable, God is accessible, God is available. No royal entourage to prevent us from, from approaching him. No security guards to keep us away. The king of kings has literally arrived humbly in his first bed. It's a manger. Now, nothing glamorous about this scene. Nothing glamorous whatsoever. So the question really is, why not make this Christmas complete and make a special room in your life and at this season for this, the Christ? In Revelation 3, 20, the word of God says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Wouldn't it be the greatest Christmas ever if you were assured that you and the King of Kings are united. It can be so if you turn from sin and ask for forgiveness through the blood of this Christ child whose birth we celebrate at this season. Father, thank you for this glorious day <clears throat> that we are about to celebrate. A day when you became man and dwelt among us and eventually went to the cross, died for our sin and resurrected breaking sin's power over our lives. We invite you into our lives today so that this Christmas will be the best ever. Thank you for wanting to have fellowship and relationship with us. We praise you for it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, Christmas, that first Christmas wasn't glamorous, but you can sure have a great Christmas this year by having a relationship with this Christ child. God bless. Have a great day.